Just two years after the end of World War II, America found itself at war yet again when we went to South Korea on June 25, 1950. A parallel that we can see unfolding before and during the Korean War is the desegregation of blacks and whites in the armed forces, as well as the integration of women into the military. According to the Korean War Legacy Foundation, there were 120,000 women on active duty status during this time, and that one-third of them were health care providers. On July 27, 1953, the Korean War was over. Even though this was the first war with integration and desegregation, these were just the start of changes for women in the military. Yet again, two years after we finish one war, we move into another, the Vietnam War. The Vietnam War is probably one of the most opposed wars in American history, and that opposition kept growing over time. Outside of the military, American culture was making its own shift, which was influencing the view on this war as a whole, not just how it applies to women who served. Looking back over time, it appears safe to say that during Vietnam, women's jobs within the military started to diversify. Most of the uniformed women were nurses, but some were serving as air traffic controllers and intelligence officers. During Vietnam, 7,500 military and civilian women served from 1965 until the drawdown that started in 1973. Women in all services distinguished themselves in Vietnam. Many were decorated, some injured, and some died. The 1970s saw a sharp increase in the number of women in the military, reflecting the impact of the women's rights movement. Remarkably, most of the women that served in Vietnam volunteered. 1967 brought about the repeal of the 2% cap placed on women serving and lifted the restriction of the highest rank that a woman could achieve within the Air Force. From 1968 to 1981, there was a six-fold increase in the number of women in the Army, going from 10,000 to 65,000. The 1970s saw a multitude of changes for women in the military. In 1973, a Supreme Court ruling in favor of Air Force Lieutenant Sharon Frontero, which authorized military women with dependents, housing, medical, commissary, and post-exchange benefits. 1973 also saw the Secretary of the Navy authorize aviation training for women. The first female flight surgeon was appointed. A women's officer school was disestablished and pregnancy rules established. In 1975, a huge shift came for women in uniform when they could remain on active duty while pregnant. This change is owed to now-retired Lieutenant Colonel Cheryl Hines-Smith. In 1976, the first women cadets entered into the service academies, and the Air Force dissolved the women in the Air Force. Two years later, in 1978, the Army disestablished the WAC and women were integrated into the military on equal footing with men. Women entered aviation training and were admitted to command organizations. The 1990s saw female pilots flying combat missions when U.S. Secretary of Defense Les Aspen Jr. revised the policy on the assignment of women in the armed forces. The tragic events that took place on September 11, 2001, had a momentous impact on women's service in the military and the American society as a whole. While this day was not the first terrorist attack on America, it was the first for a whole new generation. As the country grieved and dealt with the aftermath of this event, an extraordinary expansion for military, law enforcement, and the intelligence community happened. 2013, Defense Secretary Leon Panetta removed the military's ban on women serving in combat, overturning the 1994 ruling. In 2016, Defense Secretary Ash Carter stated that all military occupations and positions would be open to women. We have come a long way since women were strictly regulated to unpaid, unacknowledged, nurses, seamstresses, and at time, prostitutes as camp followers. While there is room for improvement within the military, 
we have come a long way, and this is true even outside the military. This is an adapted and expanded production from a previous presentation. The intent of this presentation is not to degrade the men in the past because of the societal norms of the time and what appears to be aversion to women by doing anything other than maintaining the home, but to show that women can, have, and will overcome the obstacles set before them. Thank you for watching. Thank <laughs> you.